A very good day to you and welcome to the program. It's just so good to be with you again. We're doing this in the, we're filming this program in the little uh, chapel on top of the hill at Shalom Farm. And it's just an honor and a privilege to be able to share the good news with you. This chapel is not built in the valley. It's built on the highest point of the farm. You see, Jesus wants us to shine as lights. He says, what use is it if you, if, you, if you have a light and you put a basket or something on top of it, no one can see it. We really need to be outspoken. Our lifestyle should shine for Jesus. If you look at uh, the Word of God in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 15, this is what the Word of God says. That you may become blameless and harmless, okay, innocent, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. God wants you and me to be different. Sometimes it is, I get a little bit disheartened when I see some new Christians trying to live as close as they can to the world. And that's very disturbing for me. When we become followers of Christ, Jesus says, come aside, be separate. Not to say we must live in a monastery. We don't have to all live in monasteries. But we do need to be identified as being different to the people in the world. Our dress code, our manners, the way in which we act needs to be different. We need to be like that light. A believer, listen to this, I think this is very good. A believer should not be able to live one week with a man without him being known as a Christian. Now some people I know work in a factory or in a workplace and they work there for 20 years and nobody knows that they're a Christian. There's no such thing as secret agent Christians. No Lone Rangers. People need to know who we are and what we stand for. How do we identify ourselves as being different? Well, the first thing is our language. People should know by our language, it's normally a dead giveaway, that we are believers. Because as believers, we don't swear anymore. I want to tell you the first miracle that happened in my life when I became a Christian was I stopped swearing immediately. From the day I gave my life to Jesus, I have never sworn since that day. That's 40 years ago. And I had a terrible mouth. And I want to be honest with you, I'm very embarrassed to tell you that. That was the old man. Every second word was a swear word because I have a very poor vocabulary. But when I got saved, I never swore again. That's the first giveaway. We, 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 our, the way in which we act, treat one another. Respect one another. Respect old people. Respect people from different cultures, different colors, different walks of life. Gentleness. Okay? We need to be outspoken when something is wrong. We need to say it's wrong. We need to be good as guides. We are to show the way to those who are walking in dark places. We are to show the lost the way home. We are to help folk especially in the family, and, ex and explain to them the meaning of the Bible. Explain to them how to use the Bible. Lights are used for warning, but they are also used to make people cheerful and happy and positive. A Christian will always come in and say, that glass is half full of water, where the other man will say it's half empty. We need to be men and women of great faith because we have a wonderful future waiting for us. So may God bless you as you continue to shine as a light for the Lord Jesus Christ in a dying world. Goodbye. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.